Hello! Uh, way back at the uh, start of <laughs> this year, uh, pre, pre-COVID, I put in a request for John Carter, uh, the movie based on The Princess of Mars that Disney released in 2012. It's sort of a tie-in with my reading of the book. And then COVID happened and everything shut down. And uh, just recently I got a notification from the library and uh, this showed up. John Carter of Mars, and I watched it, so I figured I'd give my impressions. Now that I am uh, five books into the Barsoomian series by Edgar Rice Burroughs, I give a reaction to the uh, what was ultimately the commercial commercial failure that was John Carter of Mars, a 2012 film uh, directed by Andrew Stanton. Andrew Stanton, um, big big animator, animation director and writer uh, for uh, such movies as like Wall-E and uh, Monsters Inc. So Pixar, uh, which, you know, the synergy there, over to D Disney for some live action. I mean, the good thing about uh, modern, especially modern special effects blockbusters, in some ways, uh, you know, other than the actual living actors, uh, a lot of this movie is is a kind of an, a is, is animation. It's computer animation uh, of a different sort where you have, you know, these these big these big beasts here uh um you know menacing poor john carter in the in the arena of death um so uh yeah yeah um i've watched the movie before and uh when it when it came out not in the movie theater but uh i, I rented it because i you know, it's like oh it's like one of those kind of keystones of um of, uh, of 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 kind of, of science fiction, science fiction fantasy, uh, big influence. Uh, the Edgar Rice Burroughs is big kind of influence on uh, probably th through Flash, something like Flash Gordon is big influence on stuff like Star Wars, the science fiction fantasy of today. Um, and so I watched it when back in the day, and I'm pretty sure I fell asleep halfway through, or I was nodding off. I found it pretty boring in the day, but uh, on th on this viewing, I stayed awake more. I still think that the uh, the pace of the whole thing is 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 pretty boring. But let's 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 go into it. Uh, brief some synopsis uh, in the in in this telling of John Carter. It, it sort of follows the book in that in that way of of uh, John Carter, uh, Civil War veteran, uh, ends up in a cave, transmigrates to Mars, where uh, he meets. He meets uh, Deja Thoris. Uh, there is great battles. Uh, there are uh, the white, the therns actually show up in this uh, this book versus showing up in I believe it's the second book, The Gods of Mars, uh, in in the series. Uh, there's definitely been some compression and kind of rearranging of stuff to try and make a cohesive story. Um, you know, there's great battles, um, big battles, there the triumphant stuff. Da -da -da -da. Who saves the day? All that sort of stuff. Um, now, the movie takes a heck of a long time to get started. We have sort of flashbacks within flashbacks. I think it starts with 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 uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs himself. No, no, it it starts it starts on. It's, God, yeah. It 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 has this kind of at the beginning. We're gonna. It's uh, Stanton. I guess is trying to kind of uh, weave together a bunch of things to try and get tell you the story is. Um, as, a, as, as engagingly, as efficiently as he can, though it does seem to take a hell of a long time. We open on Mars uh, with, um, oh, here, here, is, here is a uh, red Barsoomian who's being aided by the Therns to go against the Heliums, who are the good guys. Uh, that's where Dejah Thoris is, is, is at. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, he, the Therns have armed this guy with some kind of big blaster weapon to, to, to take out his stuff. So we get that. And then we skip to, to the Earth into like the 1880s, where uh, John Carter seems to be being followed, and he sends a he sends a uh, telegram to his nephew Ned, which is turns out to be uh, Ed, Edgar Rice Burroughs, because in the frame story, of course, we have Edgar Rice Burroughs is gonna is gonna is is the part of the frame story as a character who's then gonna tell the story of John Carter of Mars. Um, and then we we skip we, we go from from the, the telegram to Edgar Rice Burroughs arriving at the state and it's like oh John Carter has died and here is his here is his journal that's going to tell the story and it's only for you to you to read and so he reads the journal and that's sort of how the story opens which then flashes us back to John Carter uh, in the Old West after the Civil War. Um, See, we're, we're, we're skipping back and forth, back and forth. Uh, back, he's, he's after the Civil War, he's in the 
old west and he just wants to be a prospector but the uh, the uh, the uh, u.s army wants to suck him in as, as somebody who's going to fight natives he's like no i don't fight for anybody more i'm a hardened man for some reason i've got a tragic backstory not something that's in the book he's got a tragic backstory and i don't fight for anybody anymore um and you know a couple of things happen he basically ends up fleeing he he uh the uh some some natives actually do attack attack him and attack the pursuing army he saves the uh, general guy played by brian cranston um they they rush to a cave the natives look up and go oh nope nope this is this is not good this is not good and they 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 withdraw and he's like oh it's the cave it's the spider cave that i was looking for uh and you know it's supposed to have all the gold in it and he goes into the cave and suddenly this this guy, bald guy, white guy appears and uh, tries to kill him and he kills him instead and suddenly is transported to Mars and then we start we start the story in full. But it takes it so it takes a fair while to get to to get to that point. Uh, even within the story, uh, we there uh, Stanton seems to be really interested in kind of hinting at uh, really kind of a cliched kind of like sad tragic backstory for for john carter that he had this he had the you know wife and kid and didn't go well for the wife and kid he's got to be got to be freed up for uh for romantic entanglements with dejah thoris and is he going to get over his his kind of glum glumness well he's going to be glum glum through a bunch of the movie and that's going to kind of drag things down um kind of suck the energy of the movie it's a movie that's got like you know great visual effects um you know it's it's fully realized i mean it is the 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 maybe the problem with john carter is is it's it's a lot of the stuff that edgar rice burroughs came up with his original kind of wow kind of pizzazz stuff back in the day is now kind of your standard stuff in a lot of science fiction a lot of fantasy stuff but that's because they've kind of copied from Edgar Rice Burroughs so it's not their fault for that and I, I, would, I don't fault the movie for that I do fault the movie for the fact that they've made uh, Taylor Kitsch here play kind of a sad sack John Carter of Mars they wanted to give him kind of inner depth but it kind of sucks the fun out of the movie um, there's uh, an actor called uh, James Prufoy who uh, with along with Siren Hines kind of reunite for a little Rome uh, Rome uh, miniseries uh, a re- reunion where you know he plays kind of the loyal the loyal agent to Siren Hines kind of Caesar king king of the heli- heliums um, but James Prufoy kind of has this kind of kind of jokey kind of uh, laughing kind of quality to him which is like that's what probably the lead of a movie as silly and fun as John Carter Mars would be should have and indeed um, there's kind of a when there's the final battle we get more of uh, James Prufoy kind of being jokey and it seems to kind of leak out to Taylor Kitsch who at but that point John Carter has kind of dropped his sad sack stuff and uh, you know they have a little bit of fun so it's suddenly the movie kind of sparks up and then we go back into kind of frame story and and things like that and the the the, the energy then quickly deflates again but uh, it's one of these movies where it's like this is based on fun pulp novels and um you know that weren't looking particularly deep into the characters and it was sort of about the fun adventure whereas this uh, andrew stanton wants to kind of uh, invest this with a bit of gravitas with a bit of like oh he doesn't fight for other people and he's like you know i don't go i don't get involved in other causes because other causes are just they turn out to be the wrong things which is you know he's coming stanton's dealing with uh, somebody who's a uh, a confederate soldier so who might quite rightly especially from our viewpoint now be seen as somebody who should probably if if we're going to sympathize him with an audience should be somebody who should regret his support for the confederate for the confederate army at least good hunk of the population would think that that's what you should have you shouldn't be romance you shouldn't be um doing kind of a romance of the confederate the confederate side the lost cause which is what edgar Rice burroughs was doing which so he was able to have a character that wasn't reflective that was just like ah adventure martial spirit fun adventure uh andrew stanton i guess understandably has tried to make an um um john carter here much more kind of diffident and kind of glum sad sad giving him a sad backstory with his his fa- with the family um which unfortunately while i can see why he did that and it's for like good good purposes uh for good kind of like moral reasoning if you're going to have a confederate soldier at the heart of your as the hero at the heart of your family friend friendly uh, disney franchise i can see why they did that but 
it unfortunately also sucked all the it sucked a lot of the energy out of the film which is a thing like this i think lives and dies on its energy and even though it's got great special effects kind of fun stuff i liked how they dealt with uh, deja thoris thoris uh, lynn lynn collins uh is a very active kind of protagonist in this and she's um first more introduced as kind of a scientist uh than as oh, oh yeah and incidentally she's also kind of the pr she's a princess but it's like no she's a scientist she's someone who's like you know when when john carter says oh you better stand behind me little lady for this she immediately she gets the sword back and defeats a whole bunch of guys They're like maybe you should stand behind me so it's like okay yeah stanton's trying to do uh, all he can to kind of tweak and adjust the story to make it hey this is a story that you know people could you could have you can have Dejah Thoris as a active protagonist in that, but uh, it, it ultimately I think it's defeated by Taylor Kitsch, who you know just goes to show Taylor Kitsch, born Kelowna, BC. Uh, other hotties have also been born in uh, in Kelowna, BC. Uh, uh, I, I, he just happens to have the good looks and talent. Well, I, I just have this. Um, you know, I think he's a good, fine actor, but his his character. Is the is is the is the is the energy suck at the at the center of this movie? How his character is is structured. So, you know, ultimately it was interesting, especially interesting to contrast it to the uh, to Edgar Rice Burroughs' uh, original work and why that one did work, and maybe the morally reprehensible reasons why that one worked of the kind of the romance of the the lost cause of the Confederate soldier uh, at the center. Even though I would will argue that Edgar Rice Burroughs spends a lot of time with his heroes. Uh, ending up uh, freeing slaves uh, and stuff like that on uh, in in on Barsoom on Mars, uh, so he's and 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 uniting the many races that are on Mars, um, you know, trying to kind of have a positive message. Um, you know, it's also that sort of dealing with the whole thing of slavery. He um, with with that Stanton, you know, not touching slavery. No one mentioned slaves in 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 John Carter here, but trying to make trying to make the character more complex, trying to keep, make the character more sympathetic, uh, paradoxically also just makes him a lot less fun for uh, this kind of a movie. So yeah, those are my thoughts on John Carter. John Carter of Mars, as it then gets called at the very, very end of the movie title credits. I, I won't go into that. That's that's a whole marketing thing of Disney marketing and Hollywood and themselves being kind of paranoid about how badly uh, Mars movies do, do, which is like, if it's a good Mars movie, uh, like The Martian, uh, it does well. If it's eh, not so much of a good Martian movie, then they, they definitely, they definitely lose, lose, they lose money. It's like, make good movies? You can you can make money, make bad movies, not so much. Disney, of course, rolled with the punches, and in the same year, bought Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars franchise from George Lucas. So they they landed on their feet, and hopefully, uh, Taylor Kitsch, uh, fellow British Columbian, uh, well, actually, have to, he lives in Austin now, so he's I don't know, <laughs> he probably was born in Kelowna and immediately left. Uh, for all I know, that's uh, my Wikipedia scholarship for me. Um, you know. I'm sure he's doing fine in his farm in Austin. Okay, more videos later.